Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take rolling out our number three. Sharp and Shapiro, glad you could join us. Chris Wynn also joining us in studio. And, uh, you know, I love having iconic entertainers come on this show. We do it from time to time and always support, you know, live shows. And I'll tell you, I've seen this guy's show, I would say, at least a half a dozen times in the last several years. He is one of the best stand-up comics and probably, if not the best prop comic on the planet. None other than Carrot Top right now, joining us live on the show. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? Well, very much appreciate the nice words. I didn't know you've, you've seen the show before. That's oh, nice. God, yes. I've seen it a gazillion times. So I want to start off with the really good yeah. news, the surprising news. I, I, maybe some people shouldn't be surprised, but I want to congratulate you that uh, they have extended your contract over their MGM properties into 2025. And, you know, to, to most people performing on the Strip, if they even get a year on the Strip, they're ecstatic about it. And you get this contract extension. So I guess I could learn from you. What is it like to have that kind of job security? <laughs> well, I'm screwed for the next five years, I guess. I've got to go in every night. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a true blessing. I mean, I you know, going looking back when I first started 20-some years ago, about 25, I said that I was at Bally's in the beginning. Um, one, I never thought I would do this, you know, of course, have this kind of run. And secondly, I didn't think I would stay with the same company. I've been with MGM for 28 years. So that part of it really uh, meant a lot to me uh, that I could stay with the same, you know, company all these years and not move around the strip. Um, so I've been blessed. And I, I got to know my room. I loved Luxor. And it's just a great, it's, like, it's in my home. So very, very, very thankful to the uh, Luxor and also to the, all the fans in, in town. I mean, you know, my stupid billboards every on every corner of the street. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I do appreciate you guys letting me stick around. You know, you, you bring up a really good point, because I've always said this, and I'm sure you would agree. You need the support from the local community. You, you can't always expect oh, tourists to, to sell out a show every night, right? And, uh, absolutely. I, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. And so comment a little bit on that. I mean, the locals have really treated you well here, and, uh, you know, they seem to attend your show on a regular basis, people like me. I think it's more important than, I wouldn't say more important than, than tourists, but the, the local love is really is really something else because you know, every night I'll do a thing. Hey, I do a joke that, that, that really is just for locals. And I say it and, and I said, this joke is for my locals. And the, the amount of people that clap is, at night is, is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. the locals are, are not only you know are there to help, but they also like going back to what I said earlier about just letting you be in this town yeah. for all these years and, and letting you, you know, supporting you and not being like, oh, I'm tired of looking at stupid billboards. <laughs> um, so it's nice. It's nice to have yeah. that. Even when you go on to, you know, outside of the, the strip, even if I go out to Summerlin or something, those are where the locals are. And they, you know, they come up and say, hey, man, great show. And thanks for being part of the town. And um, thanks for getting involved in the town. So. I don't think people realize that Vegas really is kind of a community. I mean, sure. you know, they think, they think of the strip and they think that's it. And then you come out into the suburbs of Vegas, you realize there's, you know, we have grocery stores and we have, you know, restaurants and people and communities and you meet a lot of people here, and it's great. No question. You know, we're talking about, you know, having a show that lasts here locally. By the way, if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Carrot Top. Uh, he just got extended through 2025. Uh, a guy that I, that has come on this show, I've interviewed him a bunch of times, and he's extremely talented, Frank Caliendo. And we had discussions. I'm not, 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 not a fan. Really? Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you can't do that. <laughs> you, that, that would be a, that would be a first for us. Yeah. You got me there. Frank is awesome. Yeah, no, he's awesome. So we had a lot of conversations, and he, as you know, he had this residency, and he signed a ten-year deal at the Monte Carlo. And his show didn't last very long. And it's not because he doesn't put on a great show. It's not because he's not extremely talented. I just wasn't sure that that show was Vegas friendly, Vegas local friendly. And I'm not blaming anybody. It wasn't Frank's fault. But, you know, that was one of those shows that just didn't last. And, and look, he's not the only one. I'm not trying to pick on him. There's plenty of shows in Las Vegas that try to get that long contract, that long residency that you've had for such a long time. So why is it, you think, that your show has been so popular? Like you said, you've been here for decades. Why do you think that is? And then there are the Frank Caliendos out there where if they just don't get that type of contract extension and that long-lasting power that you have had. Well, first of all, we've all had that discussions in, in this town about how, how what shows 
how they last, and, and uh, I wish I had a I wish I had an answer for that. Um, and going back, what you said, there are so many shows that have come and gone through this town that I was like, wow, that was such a great show. How did that not make it? Um, so that I don't know. And, and, and going to my show again, I, I really don't under, I don't know if it's, if it's my fan base that I've been that I've been lucky that I, people still want to come see me. Um, we do keep the show fresh. I know you know most comics write new jokes, so I'm sure his show is always fresh. I don't know. I I, I I'm dumbfounded. I just I think every night. Oh my god! I hope they show up again and and we get to keep going. So. Um, that's a, that's a mystery question, but uh, I'm lucky in that regard that somehow people are coming back. And we've been doing this for, well, God, I've been doing comedy since '86, so it's been you know a 34 or something year run. So, but so, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. So, Carrot Top, uh, we have some similarities. Myself, I moved out here to Las Vegas back in the mid 2000s from Orlando, Florida, where I have a ton of affection and affinity for that area, for that yeah. you know, the Central Florida area. That's where you grew up. That's where you basically, uh, you know, have your your start from. But I, I I have to wonder, you know, you you go from Orlando, Florida, which of course is you know the home of Disney. Now you're in the entertainment capital of the world. Uh, where did where did the inspiration come from for you to be an entertainer and someone who's going to look to do this for a living? And, uh, and 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 had parlayed into just such, such a successful career. Is it something that uh, that spurred you in your early days back in uh, oh Central Florida yeah. and in, and down there? Absolutely. I do a whole routine in the show about when I was eight, I was eight years old, mm-hmm. and um, I remember my my mom. Well, well it's a true story. I remember I remember to always watch the the Tonight Show. My mom would find me in the living room at like five years old. What are you doing? I said, I'm watching the Tonight Show. And she's like, well, you're five. We have to go to sleep. And I remember sneaking out there and watching. I'm going to be a comedian one day. I'm going to be on The Tonight Show. And she's like, okay. And then I was on The Tonight Show one day, and I was standing there telling, like standing on the actual gold star where Carson you know, stands every night. And you just kind of have this weird moment, like, how the hell did I get here? This is the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah. um, I've never forgotten that moment. But uh, I was like eight years old, and my, I had this um, – my father had this uh, incredible tool collection. I mean, like thousands of tools, and they were all outlined and numbered. So if any tool was missing, oh man! <laughs> so I came from school a day. My dad's like, "Have you seen my hammer?" And I said, uh, "No." He says, "You think you haven't?" I said, "No." You said, "You think it might be in your fort?" I had this incredible fort, <laughs> and I said, uh, "I don't know." He says, "Should we go look?" And I'm like, uh, "No." And we go looking, and sure enough, there's the hammer. And my dad's like, "Well, how did the hammer get in here?" And I said, "I don't know." He just walked in here by itself. <laughs> so like an hour later, I went and got a hammer, and I bought these little like hands and arms, <laughs> and I drilled it onto the hammer, and I gave it to my dad. <laughs> he was in the workshop. I said, Dad, I think your hammer did walk in there by itself. <laughs> and I literally have it framed in my office because it's the first prop I ever built. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reaction was so fun. My dad's like, what the hell did you do to my hammer? <laughs> and I just thought it was the funniest thing. And to this day, well, my dad passed away about three years, but prior to that, I showed him. I showed him it framed in my office, and he says, oh, my God, I remember that. <laughs> and yeah, so that was when I first became a prop comic. And uh, so it all started. So, so for those who haven't seen your show, you probably use the most props of any, of any comedian in show business. Why do you decide to use so many props? Well, I don't know. That was just my, my shtick, you know, I, when I started doing it. Um, I mean, of course, there's a lot more stand-up in the show than there's been ever. It's, it's, it's evolved into kind of a... A little bit, of, a little bit of everything, but um, I've always liked the props, and I have always be- believed them. And, and anyway, everyone would give me a hard time about doing them. I was always thought, why would they care? It's my, it's my act. And um, Eddie Murphy was just on a TV show the other night, and I was just falling asleep listening to him. He was talking about comedy, and he says, "You know what? The most important thing that you can say to a comic, and I would, that he would say, sorry." is to believe in your stuff, no matter what it is. If it's your stuff and you believe in it. And you make it you. That that's all that matters at the end of the day. And I'm sitting there thinking that is so profound and so great because as a prop comic, I got so much grief over doing props, and I used to always just get so like weird. Like, why do they care? Why do they? Why are they even saying this? It's like you do your act, and I'll do my act. Sure, I never sure. really, I never looked at it like that. Sure. Know? For the record, I do believe in my stuff. I just wish my dates would believe in it as well. But that's. Right. A- that's another story for another show. Yeah, okay, that's awful, awful, <laughs> awful <is> joke. <laughs> uh, Carrot Top, don't use that in your act. That's a horrible joke. Yeah, uh, nice, nice. So, so you're, I remember growing up watching your one eight hundred collect commercial. Call one eight hundred collect and save a yeah. buck or two. Do you think that the the invention of the cell phone cost you millions of dollars in sponsorship? Absolutely, money? absolutely. 
I have really been bummed about that. Like, yeah, they, <laughs> although those commercials were, it was like the, it was like the progressive ones. Now they're so annoying. And I remember when I was doing them, people were like your, your commercials are so annoying. And I'd say, I know, but they're paying me to be annoying. I can't help it. But um, uh, how they does, run all the time. Ugh. So why don't you, okay. So why didn't it turn to cell phone commercials? What happened well, that's there? What I try, trust me. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I'm still trying. I'm like, come on, I'm, a ph- I'm the phone guy. Let's go. <laughs> yes, I know, exactly. So, like, Heather, what are some of the biggest celebrities that have actually attended your show? Because I imagine there's a, a array of celebrities. Have you ever been nervous on stage knowing that maybe a president was in the crowd? Or... Besides Frank Caliendo? Besides yeah. Frank Caliendo, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had, well, you know, there was, there was, a, there was, there was a rumor that Obama was going to come to our show. Um, never, never happened, but, um, the one, the one, the, there's been a lot of celebrities that come, that's come, that's, it, yeah. But the, there's one that made me just kind of go, okay, this is cool, is uh, Queen, the band Queen. Oh, wow. So, you know, they they come back and, the, you know, security brings them back and they walk in my dressing room, my gold, my, my little, my little green room, and they're like, it's Queen. I mean, they're in their, in their jackets and they're, they look like a billion dollars, right? They smell good. They're just, they're Queen. And they're like, Scott, yeah, we can't wait to see your show. And I was like, oh, man. So they go out and they watch the show, and there's a whole bunch of Queen in my show. Like, I do a whole bunch of Queen song stuff, and there's a, there's a, there's a clip of Freddie Mercury where he tells the crowd to F off. And, uh, <laughs> I remember they come that. Back and they're, yeah, they come back, and they're like, Scott. They were, just put it, they, were, they were blown away. They were so, so beyond generous and sweet about the show, and they would not stop talking about it. We went and had dinner, and they kept talking about it. And um, that that moment, I remember thinking when I went home that night, went and got in bed. I said, "All right, that was pretty damn cool." I mean, from thinking about when I was on stage, I was playing in this like literally like this loft attic in college on top of this bar, <laughs> and now thinking Queen was at my show tonight. So it, 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 there's moments like that where you just, you know, it was even stronger than the Tonight Show. I think just having them having them in my presence and being so cool, you know? So, Carrot Top, being a unique entertainer like you are, obviously you get opportunities to be in, you know, all types of media situations. What has been, what has been your favorite when it comes to, whether it's either movies or TV shows where you're like, oh, wow, this is super cool. I get a chance to, you know, to be, you know, in, in, in yeah. the realm with some, with some of these people. Well, I just told a story last night. I was, uh, uh, of course, I think movies are fun. Because they're, right. just, they're, just, they're just the different energy. You know, stand up is an instant thing. You know, you do the joke and bam, it's funny or it's not funny. In a movie, you're you're just so you're you're, you're just sitting out there with you know nothing, and you deliver your lines and you mm-hmm. kind of no one can laugh. And then you go and cut. All right, move on to the next scene. So you don't know if it's funny or not. So, but I did get to work with them uh, when I was young. I was in a movie and I rock a scene with Raquel Welsh. I remember calling my mom. I said, Mom. I'm in a movie with Raquel Welsh today. And she's like, no, you're not. I said, yeah, yeah, I am. How weird is that? That's but, awesome. Um, but the best one I just told last night, um, there was a movie that came out called Last Vegas, and they shot a lot of it, um, mostly in Atlanta, but they shot some here. But, I, of course, they called me and said, hey, you want to be in this movie? And I said, Abs- I'm a whore. Yes, of course I do. <laughs> so they flew me to Atlanta, and uh, I get there, and it's Robert De Niro, Michael Douglas. No, nah, he's Morgan Freeman. Kevin, yep. Kevin Klein and Morgan Freeman, correct? Yep. Yep. So I like I don't know five in the morning. It's like dark out still. And the director comes over and gives me this big hug and he says, "Hey man, the guys are so excited. I'm, we're so excited. This is great." And uh, I got you set up in this little room in here because it's kind of cold out. I got you set up in this little room. So he walks me in this room and there's four chairs with all those guys' names on it, right? <laughs> and I go, "What the hell?" And he says, "I'm get let me grab you a chair." I go, Wait, "No, no, 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 no." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get you a chair quick." So he puts this blank chair in there with these four other chairs with all these, I mean, those names on it, right? Jeez. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sitting in here. I, this is no way. He says, they'll be right back. Just sit right here in your chair. And I'm like freaking out. I get my phone out. I'm taking a video of all the chairs and Michael Douglas. Da, da, da. And all of a sudden, they come walking in. Michael Douglas says, hey, man, how you doing? I said, great. And De Niro says, hey, man, how you doing? You're out of Vegas. I said, good. I said, they, you know, we shot the, we're shooting in Vegas. Why the hell did they fly to Atlanta? I said, right. <laughs> and so they were having a great time. And then Morgan Freeman walks in and he goes, who the hell are you? <laughs> and I said, I was, I was waiting for one of you guys to say that. Cause I mean, it can't be, he can't be, no, no, seriously, who the hell are you? He didn't say who the, he said, who the F are you? And he kept saying it like, 
and not even being funny. He was saying it like, seriously, who the F are you? And I said, I don't know. And then Michael Douglas goes, he's a he's carrot top, for God's sake. He's a <laughs> so what so, is this, like, they all got my my back on that one. But he, Morgan Freeman just kept shaking his head like, I have no idea who you are and how you got in. So you're telling, me, you're telling me Klein, Michael Douglas, Robert De Niro, obviously they know who you are. These are yeah, uh, which was, yeah. yeah and, and these are, you know, four of the arguably the most iconic uh, yeah. male actors in the history of, of the big screen. Absolutely. And Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman walks in there, and he has no idea who the hell you are. And he didn't want to know. I, they kept trying to tell him. He said, I don't really want to know who he is. So, like, do you but like? He was nice, but he just—he was just—he was just didn't give it, you know. Yeah, he, he just didn't care. Do, do you hang out with those guys? Like, some what are when you when you well, dro- that day I did that day I hang I sit in the chairs and we talk, which is weird, but yeah. So but who are? Like, so, yeah. So who are some of the big celebrity friends that you have? Like when you travel to L.A., I would imagine, you know, you've been you've been done movies. You've been doing this for a long time. When you go to L.A., what is a typical Saturday if, if you're not doing your show? We know you're a hard worker. You're usually at the Luxor. But when you're not doing your show and you want right. to go out and have fun, like who are some of the celebrity friends that Carrot Top parties with and hangs out with? I, you know, I, back in the day when I lived in L.A., it was more of a scene. When I was younger and I probably would hang out with people more than I do now. Now I just I'm, I'm old and I just hang out in the <laughs> hotel room. But uh, yeah, you know, you, you, I know people, so it's kind of fun. You know, you walk your restaurant, hey, how's it going? Um, but the, the restaurant in LA is always kind of fun, no matter what, because I everyone gets excited to see celebrities. It's just fun. And there's a place there that you go, and it's paparazzi. It's horrible. They're always standing outside asking these stupid questions. <laughs> they, they have nothing to do with usually me. Like, you're like, what do you think about you know Trump so and so? I don't know. <laughs> So, <laughs> what so, do you think you about know, Kim Kardashian's baby? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So I don't know. So then I, 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 I was given what they want. Then I go in, and then you, when you walk in, it's, which this is the last time I was there, and this Don Rickles was still alive. He was alone, but like three, six months ago, whatever it was. He was, he was, he was sitting at a table with, with like literally like Larry King, Don Rickles, um, Mrs. Brady, wow, who's still around. And Nikki Six. Oh from, my God! So right, and then me, and I'm like, "What is going on?" So I went over to because I, I I was in a movie with Don Rickles, so I didn't want to bother him. But I said, "I got to say hi, right?" So I said, I walked up to his table. I said, "Don, hi. I don't want to bother you, but I was wanted to say hi. And if you remember working with me on Dennis the Menace, and he says, "I've tried to forget everything you and I have ever done." <laughs> like instantly just turned into. Don Rickles and I say, "Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, well, I don't want to bother you." Well, that's too late now. You've bothered me. What do you want? <laughs> and I said, "I just wanted to say hi." He said, "Well, you said hi, then leave." And I said, "Okay, I'll leave." <laughs> then he goes, "Come here, kid." And he squeezed my cheeks and he's like, "How are you? Seriously, how are you?" I said, "Good." How's is my name still good in Vegas? I said, "Of course it is." <laughs> <laughs> well, so, then, so, so you, so you mentioned said, hi, just, they, these are all my friends. Say hi to my friends. I go hi. He says, "Now say bye to all my friends." It was, it was a it was a brilliant moment. So, yeah, that's that's amazing, and I remember I met Don Rickles about six months before he passed away at the Orleans. I, I was able to meet yeah, him backstage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, just so funny, and I remember he said, "Brian, what's your last name?" And I go Shapiro, and he looks at me and he goes, "You're a Jew?" And I said, "Yeah." <laughs> and I said, "Well, since you're a Jew, come on over here and sit down with me." I mean, what was what was amazing to me about him is is even to to the day he died, his brain still worked so oh, well. No. You know, he was oh, brilliant. Sharp, sharp, absolutely. That's what yeah. blew me away that night when I walked up. Do you remember working with me? I've tried to forget everything we've ever done. <laughs> it was great. Oh, that's that's an incredible story. So I have to ask you about this. Your body, you are just diesel, right? People, I look at you now. Guys, yeah, first of all, up. yeah, you are, up, you are just yeah. ripped. And I know yeah. you, I know you work out a lot. But like, what advice would you I'm give to doing push-ups right now? <laughs> I believe it. What advice would you give yeah, to, to three people in studio right now that will never be on the front of Fitness Magazine? What advice yeah. would you give? To, I mean, I would imagine you eat very healthy. You take care of yourself. How the hell do you get to look the way you look at your age? Well, in, well, first of all, I've done. I've oh, since I was, my mom would back me up since I was I don't know 10, 12 years old. I started working out. I wanted to be a rest on the wrestling team, and I was a swimmer. So I've always been taking care of myself since I was a kid, and I and all the way through college I worked out. So I've never stopped. So that's one thing. I've always been a fanatic in a sense of that. Um, and I do eat good, but I also, my, as my friends only know, I do really take it seriously. Like I go to the the park every morning and I run five miles. So it's like. Every morning. I don't care if it's cold out, if I'm sick, I do like that. So there's a lot of things that I do. It's not like, oh, I'm I'm a little bit genetically blessed because I just have to kind of lean. 
but I do work. I really do work hard at it. So it's a, uh, it takes a lot of time, you know, not really. It takes, you know, you get up, run, you don't have to run yeah, five miles, 30, 45 minutes. You can walk one mile and just maybe go to the gym and do 20 minutes. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but, but I do, like I said, I do, oh. I do work at it and I also do eat clean. So, mm-hmm. Now I will say this: I, I did see you at. And then I throw at, up at, after I eat. Uh, too. Of course, you have to do that. <laughs> but I, 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 I did see you at at Giordano's at Fashion Show Mall a couple of years ago. So I don't know. I don't know if you're eating clean that day, but uh, well, for, no Sundays are pizza free no day. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, that makes football sense. Football and pizza. You got to have a day. Right. So your your cheat day is Sunday. Yeah, usually watching football, just have a burger and. Yeah, gotcha. Like so, so you you mentioned how Vegas is a community you've been here and how the local sport is so big. What's your and I I actually I moved here two years ago from Omaha, Nebraska myself, and I think that the food in Vegas is the most underrated part of the entire city. What's your favorite restaurant in Vegas, Carol? Oh, there's so many, isn't it great? I mean, and they keep adding more and more of them. Um, we like going down to Italy. Have you been there? It's so fun. I have not yes. been there yet. I have. Yeah, it's great. You feel like you're in New York, or you feel like you're all over the country, over the world, but. Um, we went to one in Rome, and and, and you, you go into the one here, and you feel like you're you're back there. You know, it's just a beautiful, it's a great. And everyone that works there is authentic. They like they literally Italians. They make they make the most authentic Italian food. So, but out in this, there's so many places there's the, out here in Vegas. I mean, that's what, even on the Strip. I mean, my goodness, like every every hotel has three or four fabulous restaurants. You know. Yeah, well, well, Carrot so, Top. It, let me say this. You know, you represent this town so well. You've done a lot of good things for a lot of people in this town and uh, Vegas is very very lucky to have you here i've like i said i've seen your show a bunch of times you're you're extremely talented we're really happy for you that they have extended your residency into 2025 are you ever going to shave your head by the way is that ever going to happen <laughs> <laughs> well they they have all these bald caps now so there's no reason to do that i guess but you yeah. have to be the most recognizable guy like one of the most recognizable people because of your hair i would imagine right well, yeah, i'm screwed in a lineup that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> carrot top thank you so much for joining us man we really do appreciate your time we'd love to have you on again sometime yeah man thanks for chatting and thanks for all the love and support over the years at the show i really appreciate that more than you know you thanks bet. a lot buddy thanks yeah, man thanks a lot carrot top all, right. all your listeners too thank you yeah. all right there you go class act right there and uh, extremely talented guy very funny uh, Carrot Top and uh, his, uh, if you just joining us, his residency has been extended. His contract has been extended through 2025. The guys have been here for the guys been here for decades. He knows how to put on a really good, friendly, family friendly but fun show that involves politics, music. Do you know how much money it, this guy has made in his career? Oh, he's made a lot. I can imagine almost a hundred million dollars. Yes. Why didn't I ask him that? Hey, Carrot Top, how much money's in your bank account? I, I, that's usually <laughs> the question I ask people. every single time. Well, yeah. hey, he's hanging out with people like Nikki Six and uh, you know and I mean, that, uh, Mrs. That, Brady that, and people really like impressive. that in L.A. That you got to be big time to be in that crowd. That Don Rickles story was was pretty cool because that, was, that is oh, the Morgan Freeman yeah. story was the best. That was good too. That that Don Rickles story. It's exactly the way he treated yeah. me. Yeah. Same sort mm-hmm. of fun humor, sarcasm. Don Rickles is one of the best. By the way, if you didn't, if you haven't had a chance to check. Check out Carrot Top. You got to do it. He performs, I believe, five nights a week, and it is at the Luxor. He has his own, uh, you know, place where he performs, where they that they built for him. It is an unbelievable show. It is family friendly, and it is a lot of fun. And by the way, it's also affordable. For God's sake, some of these shows on the Strip cost two, three hundred dollars. Not the case with Carrot Top. It's affordable to bring your family, and it is an absolute great time. And we really do appreciate. Carrot Top taking some time to join us. All right, so uh, this is a, a wild and crazy story that I want to get to when we come back. A girlfriend is charged in a Boston college student's death after telling him hundreds of times to kill himself. Do you believe that she should be convicted? We'll get to that story and O.J. Simpson back in the news. That coming up next. You're listening to The Vegas Take.